Okay, we finished with contraction, now we're going to start with relaxation. How many steps then we need in order to get relaxation? Acetylcholine gets released. What you're going to do? You reabsorb the acetylcholine back into the nerve. In addition to that, in the synaptic cleft, there is an enzyme. This enzyme is called acetylcholinesterase, and this enzyme is going to destroy the acetylcholine. So if there is no acetylcholine, then there's no more contraction. Step number two, we reabsorb the calcium. And step number three, we use ATP in order to separate myosin from the actin. Okay, if we scroll down, we get to the next concept, which is the length tension relationship. Basically, this means that the best contraction that you're going to get depends on how your muscle is. If it's overly stretched or over contracted, it will not get a good contraction. There is an optimum resting length, which is going to give you the best contraction. Twitch. We need a nerve to make a muscle move, but all the stimulus that a nerve is going to produce needs certain strength in order to achieve that. Sometimes, the amount, but just barely, amount of a stimulus will produce a twitch. The twitch doesn't perform any type of work, but it's a contraction. If you change the frequency of electrical stimulus, then you can change the strength of twitches. And here, for example, they increase the strength of an electrical stimulus. And look at the muscle contraction. You see it increases? And if we can get to the other one, where you can see in here they change the frequency. And this one, you can even see the relaxation here. Okay, we keep going. Other type of contractions that we have are going to be isometric and isotonic. Isometric, iso means the same. Metric means length. So imagine that you are pushing a wall. Your muscle length will not change because you can't move the wall. So in this case, do you produce a force to move the wall? Yes. However, did that length of your muscle change? No, because you were not able to move the wall. And this is called isometric contraction. The other one is isotonic contraction. Isotonic contraction is when you produce the same amount of force all the time. For example, the lifting a dumbbell. If you want to produce a movement in which you can actually put the dumbbell on the floor, you have to maintain the same force, otherwise this will drop to the floor. Same thing applies in here. If this is 5 pounds and you produce 5 pounds, you are going to be able to lift the dumbbell this way. But if you produce more force, this will come out flying because you're producing more force than what you need. So these two types of contractions are going to be isotonic because you have to maintain the tone. Otherwise, in this example, you will drop the dumbbell to the floor. When this comes towards you, this one is called isotonic concentric. When this one goes away from you, this is isotonic eccentric. The next topic is muscle metabolism. In other words, what do muscles need in order to contract? As you can see in there, ATP. Immediate energy from 0 to 10 seconds. And you're going to get this through the creatine kinase. So this is going to be able to produce ATP for the first 10 seconds. The next one is short-term energy. This one is from 10 seconds to 40 seconds. This one is going to be through anaerobic respiration. The step necessary in order to create this, glycolysis. And you produce two ATPs. The next one is long-term energy. Long-term energy is from 40 seconds until you finish running. In this case, this is going to be aerobic respiration, and this produces 36 ATPs. Next topic, fatigue and endurance. Immediate ATP through the creatine kinase. From 10 to 40 seconds, short-term ATP, you get it from anaerobic respiration, which is going to be glycolysis. And from 40 seconds till the end of your race, there's going to be aerobic respiration. You get fatigue because you use your muscles too much for a long period of time. For example, if you're running a marathon, then you're going to get fatigue because you use your muscles too much and for too long. What reasons produce this fatigue? Potassium accumulation, ADP accumulation. When you're running, for example, a marathon, at the very end, you're very tired. Are you breathing properly? No. So even though you're running, you're not getting the amount of oxygen that you need. So you owe your body oxygen. What happens when the race finishes? You start breathing very fast because you need to repay that oxygen that you were not breathing when you were finishing the race. And this is called repayment of oxygen depth. The next topic is physiological classes of muscle fibers, and we have two. As you can see here, the first one is a slow oxidative. If this one is a slow, then the other one is going to be fast. And we can see that in here. You can see are fast, are clear, slow, or dark. This is because muscles are going to have different characteristics because they're going to perform different type of activity. For example, we have the gastrocnemius, which is for jumping. You're going to have more of these light fibers. The solute, which is going to allow you to stand up for a long period of time, is going to have more of these dark fibers. 
muscular strength and conditioning. Strength and conditioning depends on how you are going to exercise and how you're going to use your muscles and you're going to get more by using your muscles more frequently. And how do you achieve that? Well, you can use resistance exercise or endurance exercise. Resistance exercise is against some weight, for example, when you lift weights at the gym. And endurance is, for example, when you run. And which one is more beneficial? Well, none of them alone is better when you do cross training, in which you do part of resistance exercise, as well as enduring exercise during your daily physical activities.